Little is much if God is in it. Comes from a line of a hymn. And thinking today about that thought about little is much if God is in it. And the life of a man in the Bible called Gideon, taken again from Hebrews chapter 11. But this man of faith, this man Gideon, and how God uses a weak man, a man from one of the smallest tribes, a man who complains that uh, I cannot do it. And yet here he finds himself in Judges chapter 7, verse 2. And God speaks to him. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand, lest Israel boast over me. God seems to often use the insignificant, the small things, uh, those who are unknown, uh, to, to do his work for him. It's not those who are the boastful, those who are the arrogant, but those who seem to have little and, and God sometimes reduces what we have to almost nothing. And then we fear and we wonder, how can God move in this situation? And yet here we find Gideon in such a situation. It says, Now therefore proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and trembling, let him return home and hurry away from Mount Gilead. Then 22,000 of the people returned and 10,000 remained. God reduced the army from 32,000 Israelites to 10,000. And then in verse five, so he brought the people down to the water and the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laps the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set by himself. Likewise, everyone who kneels down to drink and the number of those who lapped, putting their hands to their mouth was 300 men. But all the rest of the people knelt down to drink water. Separation again. 10,000 now becomes only 300 men. Amazing how God reducing the number here so that the glory would go to him. And dear Gideon must have been wondering, what Lord can we do with 300 men? Encouragement to us to remind us that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. The God who is with us day by day, the God who leads us and guides us, it's not about numbers with God. It's not about man's strength, but the strength that God gives to us. And eventually in the story, we go to verse 19. So Gideon and the hundred, uh, and the hundred men who were with him, because they, they divided them up into three hundreds, came to the outskirts of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. And when they just set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and smashed the jars that were in their hands, then the three companies, 100 each, blew the trumpets and broke the jars. They held in their left hand the torches and their right hands the trumpets to blow. And they cried out, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. And the story, of course, goes on, as you know, and you can read this in Judges 7, Judges 8, how Gideon, through the power of God, defeats the Midianites, an army of some 135,000 men. Must have seemed absolutely impossible. And yet God used Gideon and his weakness and these 300 men to carry out his uh, desire here to defeat the Midianites and to show his glory. Maybe today as you're listening to this, you're thinking about your own life and maybe uh, how insignificant sometimes things that we do but some of the things that we do that seem insignificant can work out wonderfully in God's plan. What about the prayers of God's people? What about an act of kindness or a, a word of encouragement to others? Maybe you've taught Sunday school or some youth organisation or involved in some other way over the years and you wonder, where has that all been? Why is, uh, what has ever happened in the midst of all of that? Or in your family, maybe not seeing those yet in Christ that you long to see in Christ. There's a man called James Halden, and sometimes we remember the missionaries, don't we? But we don't always remember those who were behind the scenes, those who maybe influenced someone. And that's what I want to encourage us with today. James Halden was a man from Scotland and Perthshire, uh, came from a little village. And I want to read to you about his background. 
says he was converted by the witness of a lady who conducted special classes for a few boys to supplement the education provided in the village. This, together with his association with the mission hall of the village, taught him to know and love Christ. It also appears that these early years established him in a firm trust in the sovereignty of God, from which he never wavered, and which stood him in good stead during the trying days of his latter service in North Africa. We can hear about James Halden, but actually we don't hear about the lady who taught him or about the mission hall, those who influenced him, how we can be an influence for others. Halden went on to serve the Lord in North Africa and has written about, of course, and maybe a book or several books, but we know nothing about the background of those who helped to get him there. I want to think about little as much of God is in it just in closing today and that little hymn there is a work for all to do heart the master's voice it's calling to the harvest calling you that reminder to us around us there is a harvest field around us and just as this lady influenced Halden and maybe influenced many others for all we ever know and many people are like that in life in fact the vast majority of Christians Will never really be known for what they've ever done and that doesn't matter what matters is that God would receive the glory and that we'd be faithful does the place you're called to labor seem so small and little known maybe you feel that today well it's great if God is in it and he will not forsake his own if God is in what we're doing what seems insignificant which may seem small which may seem uh, trivial to other people, the little help, the kind word, the blessing unto others, the word and season, the challenge, the witness, whatever it happens to be, service in the church, helping to maybe run a little Sunday school or whatever else, God will use that. And when the conflict here has ended and our race on earth is run, he will say, if you have been faithful, welcome home, my child. Well done the end of it all, all that matters is if God says to us that well done, my good and faithful servant. He sees all we do. He knows our attitudes and our thoughts, why we do it. And we just want to keep on going, knowing that even if it seems small, even if it seems little, little as much, if God is in it. Thank you very much once again for listening.